All right, everybody, Maddie C Sports for you and me. Um, I got a guy here from um, Red, it's Red Strike, right? Red Seal. Red Seal, excuse me. Red Seal in Lakeville, Massachusetts. I'd like to welcome Sean Schubert. Um, so how are you doing this afternoon, man? Hey, what's up, Maddie? I'm doing well. I want to thank you last uh, Saturday for introducing yourself to me at Cage Titans 55, which was a pretty dope uh, fight. And uh, how do you think you did um, um, with your boy beating uh, Julian Connerton um, last fight? Well, it was definitely a good outing for us. He, he finished him inside of a couple minutes of the third round. So Anthony's got a lot of experience. He's been with me for about four years, five years going on there. And he's got he's got some experience under his belt. We were having a hard time finding somebody to fight him around the area at Cage Titans. And we're pretty thankful for this Julian kid to step up. He came up a little bit in weight. Anthony was kind of sitting around 65. We chopped off about five pounds and we had a catch weight for him. But this Julian kid supposedly stopped a bunch of people in uh, Cage Titans' previous fights. So we were pretty excited to fight him. I guess um, around the area, he's been known to have kind of a big mouth. So people were pretty glad that we were able to stop him in the in the third round and give him a little bit of taste of his own medicine, I guess, there. And it was just a great night overall. And... Um... Plenty of good action going on. Um, some good Muay Thai fights in general. Um, I think Mike's doing a good thing about bringing in the Muay Thai along with the MMA. How do you feel about like both combining? Yeah, I think that's I think that's great. Obviously, I'm a Muay Thai guy. I started off in Cage Titans as an MMA cat. A lot of people know my background. I've been doing this for about ten years. I was having some problems in the wrestling background but was doing more things in the kickboxing and boxing realm and having a lot of success so I switched over after about five MMA fights and my success in kickboxing and Muay Thai just took off so it's it's definitely got a special place in my heart you know the strikers and going to cage titans getting a, a plate full of of knockouts and and stoppages and some blood on the canvas is definitely a solid night out for me. I like to watch that a lot more than grappling. And of course, all the bloodthirsty savages at Plymouth Memorial Hall like to see a little bit of banging too, you know? Yeah. And, you know, the town of Lakeville itself is pretty much bringing out some dope fighters like Lakeville MMA, your Red Seal team. Like, Lakeville's making a name for themselves. And, uh, Happy to see you guys all doing well. Yeah, we appreciate that, man. It's a solid area, a solid group of guys around here. Johnny Mirando is the guy that owns Lakeville MMA, and him and I are pretty tight. He puts out a lot of good fighters. He's got a couple of title holders out of there right now for Cage Titans. He's got some guys that have gone off the contender series and competed at some of the highest levels. And Johnny's been in the game for, for a long time. He knew my original martial arts instructor from when I was a kid. So um, he's been around the area for a long time and doing some great things around here. So we're happy to be friendly and we're happy to add to that reputation that Lakeville's on the map. And there's a lot of great cats coming around this area and training with us and, and the community's real tight around here. So we're pretty grateful for that too. So you guys are pretty much taking over, uh, 495 and 24 you guys pretty much took over that road <laughs> yeah 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 that's the turf right there hey, the old age six on 495 that's my turf and it, it seems like you guys like you yourself you seem like you just have fun like you don't take this like heart to heart you take it you take it to a point where like you're having fun more of the time than you are you know serious it, or maybe i just see life, the fun man. side it's a, it's a great time it's a good life really i mean i'm gonna have to get a job i'm gonna have to work regardless right so i'd much rather do all that kind of work for myself 
instead of doing it for somebody else that's profiting off of all my hard work and all my success and all my innovations and whatever, you know, I'm bringing to the table to better myself. And basically other people are going to reap the, the benefit of, of me building myself up. Right. So started my own gym 10 years ago. I was kind of mixing it up in the MMA scene. I was t- teaching classical martial arts, Kempo, Shotokan, doing the karate thing for a while. And then I started getting real in depth with combat sport, combat analytics, and just changed the whole way that I was thinking and teaching and approaching martial arts in general. So I gave up all that classical, traditional black belts style of running a gym, stopped doing so much Shotokan and Kempo, and started moving in towards combat sports started making a little bit of a name for myself, making some waves in the Muay Thai scene, the kickboxing scene, came up as an amateur, won the first amateur lion fight title at the Foxwoods Casino down in Connecticut. So things were taken off for me, went pro about a year and a, a year and a half ago, a year ago, a little, little more than a year ago. So, you know, we're just, we're just out here having a good time. You know, this went from, me doing it as a hobby to me doing it for a career and then things start to level out and steady out and you start to get kind of in love with the stress of owning a business and the fact that it's doing well this is my thing and the money kind of side of it will come, it will go, it's got its ups and it's down, but my quality of life is insane, right? Like I'm doing what I love to do. I'm fighting for money on the side. I run a gym where I'm teaching young kids, teenagers, adults that have a passion and it's really cool thing for me. So of course I'm having fun. And like when I met you, I was like, yeah, this dude's pretty chill. He's a badass dude too at the same time. So, and I appreciate you, you know, I see you like you're in a lot of the MMA events that go on in the New England area. You're, you're pretty much mostly at all of them. So the dedication you have is totally cool, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's part of the gig, right? Is that, when you're in the community, you want to support the promoters. You want to support the fighters. You want to support guys that you cross train with. So whenever I'm going out and I got extra time or, you know, whatever it is, extra money, I'm going to kick that over to the cats that are giving up their Saturdays. They're giving up their body. They're giving up their mentality and their family time to come and train and work out and, put in for their own fights or put in time for my fights when I'm going to their gyms or they're coming to my gym and we're cross training and getting some work in. And that's the love of the community. And when you are saying all these things, but you are unsupportive or you never show the love, you never go to the shows, then you're just kind of talking the the talk, but you're not out there really showing love and building the community and, showing your face and doing all that kind of stuff that you're supposed to be doing. And that's really important to, to grow in the game and to give it back to the community that you came up in. Right. So that's, that's an important thing because that stuff's never going to go away. No matter if you get to the top or you stay at the same level, or you're just a fan of going to all these things and you want to see people and meet fighters. And when those people are cool to you, like, that sticks around in, in your memories and that's, and that's cool for you. That, that makes that experience of going to the fights or going to the events even better for you. And I agree with that considering like, you know, I work with cage Titans doing the interviews after post fight wins and Anthony was in there um, chilling with us, like answering questions and stuff, but like getting to know fighters and stuff is a great thing. And you know, the fans and then people you don't even know, they say, oh, I've seen your show. Like, I really like it and it's good stuff. And MMA and boxing has been a blessing for me because of, you know, like the fan base is incredible. And 
everybody thinks, oh, well, they're fighters. They're like, you know, they have this persona that like they're mean, like they look, have a mean face, but literally the guys like you and other people are basically nice people. You know, they get this perception that like they're hard nosed, like tough guys, but people are nice too. <laughs> they need to know that, you know? Yeah, of course, that kind of comes with the territory. People hear your reputation before they meet you, and then they put together all these kind of snap judgments, especially looking at your face when it's all bruised up or all cut up or, you know, bleeding all over the place or you got scars all over it, whatever it is. You know, people definitely look at you silly and definitely make their kind of snap judgments of what they think a fighter is. is. But at the same time, we get that outlet as fighters. So usually when you're catching a fighter outside of the gym or somebody that works out and trains hard inside of the gym, the last thing that we want to do is go out to a bar and fight, especially somebody that does it for a profession, right? The last thing I want to do is start a problem, start an argument, get somebody all revved up and have to, you know, get my own blood boiling. That's the last thing I want to do after doing it all day. I do it at work. I, I listen to people, tell their stories, ask their questions, analyze fighting, all that kind of stuff all the time. So when I go home, I like to relax. I like to just chill out. Sorry about that, Sean. This shit's killing me. But anyways, um, so coming into this upcoming week, you are uh, September 10th about uh, in Bear, Vermont. So you have small glove uh, block, uh, Muay Thai, which this is the first time they have four ounce gloves. So tell me about what's going on September 10th. Yeah, so September 10th in Barrie, Vermont, I'm fighting for a promotion called Donnie Brook, and they offered me this fight probably, geez, I don't know, eight, eight or ten months ago, really, and they've been trying to put it together. It was originally scheduled with uh, an MMA cat called Matt Probin, and now I got a new opponent called Sammy the Bull. Um it's been a big thing, obviously, on the one championship, showing the mix of MMA and Muay Thai on the cards. They've been mixing it up, doing it in the ring, doing it in the cage. They've been using small gloves. They've been using big gloves. So people have really been getting a lot better feel of what the difference is between Muay Thai, MMA, what the difference is between the gloves, how the cuts and stoppages are all going to start to work, and getting a little bit of exposure because one FC is doing that. They also just got signed on to Amazon prime. So I'm assuming the exposure for that kind of stuff is getting a lot bigger. Obviously anything like that, where it's going to take whatever you're doing and making it more extreme is going to fly around here. So we've been trying to get that thing kind of happening. There's actually talks of us doing it with Mike Pulver and cage Titans. And we're, having all that kind of talk before COVID hit two years ago, a lot of that s stuff from the commission got pushed through down here in Massachusetts. And we were having a lot of trouble finding guys to fight, wanted to fight me and do it with the small gloves. We almost had a couple matches. Like I said, right before COVID, I was like two weeks out from one of those matches we were going to do. And then right after COVID, we were trying to, get things kind of live and back up trying to find a match for me again. And we were just getting hung up between weight and size gloves and all these kind of things. So 
the contract really fell through at the last minute. Then Lion Flight came to me the contract. Then Donnie Brook came to me with contract. They're offering me big money, big promotions. So naturally, I'm going to say yes to the to the fight that's there. It was a long time since December that I was waiting to fight. A lot of stuff was coming up, falling through, coming up, falling through. So when Lion Fight offered me the fight to fight in June, and then these guys offered me the fight in September, I basically signed both contracts at the same time. And I've been in fight camp since early in, in uh, June. Yeah. Um, I think your last fight. So the famous spinning back fist. We gotta we gotta talk about that, man. Huh? That was just like I don't get how El Presidente did not see that, or if he did, he should have posted that shit. Yeah, well, we just gotta keep poking the bear, you know. We gotta just keep making sure Dave and and all them boys at Barstool and spinning back fist know what's really going on down here in Massachusetts. So. Um, yeah, the, the spin and back fist actually has been a big part of my arsenal for years. It was a huge weapon in my amateur career, so a lot of people know about it. It's definitely kind of goes around, right on, along with my persona, goes with my reputation. You know, people know the hair, people know the tongue, people know the spin and back fist. Um, and then, again, like that mentality that – when, when I come to play you, it's going to be a war no matter what, right? So I'm a, I'm here for exciting fights. I would fight for, you know, peanuts because I enjoy fighting so much. It gasses me up. It gasses up my fan base. It gasses up the members to my gym. And we thrive on the fights around here. That's one of the other reasons you see me at so many of these events is because I put fighters on everything we say yes to everybody when they ask us to fight they know we're going to say yes to it so promoters love us because last minute they're going to call and they're going to say hey look we need a guy do, do you have anybody at this weight and if we do we're ready we we are ready all the time around here and didn't you didn't you attempt to do uh spinning back fist in that fight not just that one I thought you did another one or attempted to do another one. So my previous win off of Lion Fight was against a kid named Chase Walden, and he caught a taste of the spinning back fist too. That dropped him in the, I think, second second round of, of our fight, Lion Fight, got him a standing eight count. He was – one of the one of the tougher kids to to eat it to get back up, but I've sank that thing into a lot of chins. I've put a lot of people down. Some kids are tough and get back up. Some kids are not so tough and have a have a little bit of trouble shaking it off. But it comes out of nowhere. I can swing it from both sides. I use it with pressure. I use it against pressure. It's just been a nice little piece of of my toolbox for a long time and it, and it fits in it. And like I said, people know about it, but they just can't stop it. Oh, now that I think about it, maybe El Presidente had a reason because Molly mechanics throws and she probably stole. She, that's like her, her, Signature. Now she two last fight in the fight before, so maybe she got some. Yeah, maybe a little bit of clout right there. Take I'm getting shadow banned <laughs> on my spinning back fist. <laughs> oh man! So, um, you know, how did how did you start uh, Red Seal? Well, I started this company about 10 years ago. And like I said, I was training and doing a lot of classical martial arts growing up as a kid. And I was dabbling in MMA kind of as a hobby just because I wanted to test out what I had been learning growing up my whole life. You know, they teach you about self-defense and using it only when you have to. And then this 
big new thing comes in is making huge waves and takes the spotlight. They're on pay-per-view and HBO and all these kind of people are talking about this real style of fighting where they're taking people from all these different backgrounds and they're putting them in the ultimate fighting championship. So now you've got somebody that's my age that's been doing karate for their whole life. And now you get this competition where they're going to let you test your martial arts. They're going to pit one style against another and see who's got the best thing going on. And by the time I was 18, MMA had evolved into more along the, the lines of what it is today and less along the lines mm-hmm. of your style versus my style where everybody just does MMA. Now everybody gets a little bit of striking, a little bit of wrestling, a little bit of jits, and they mix up what they think is kind of the best formula for themselves or for their team and so forth. Right. So I was doing that as a kid. And when I was looking through my career paths, the guy that I was training with said, Hey, what if you open up a gym and I'd be the face of it and you run the classes and we start making some money, and you know, we'll, we'll take care of it that way. And it seemed like a good idea. We started making some moves doing that stuff. And he ended up passing away and kind of holding, um, this whole, whole thing over my head where I had gotten left with students and left with all kind of decisions to make and, and no more mentor to help me or guide me through some of the thoughts that I was making. So naturally, I started seeing the clear differences between traditional martial arts and combat sports and my moral compass was steering me away from teaching young kids especially that this is what fighting is and this is what protecting yourself looks like and all these kind of things in the traditional martial arts and giving them belts and and ranks and a false sense of security was really kind of tugging at my heartstrings a little bit and then the same thing with adults but with adults you can kind of make your own choice so my biggest thing was kind of upfront, letting people know hey this is the product that you're getting here this is the product that you're getting here and I tried to run it both things at first and then kind of just down the line things started evolving where one got phased out there was less people interested in kind of the belt system in the classical martial arts piece and more people were leaning in towards the combat sports and more interested in actually learning the steps of sparring and how to fight and getting in the mix and taking their own amateur fights and that kind of thing just took off and you know obviously with myself kind of leading the charge because at first I had no fighters I was the only guy out there going to the shows in fighting and then people started saying like oh hey you know this guy can fight like maybe we can go to his gym and we can learn how to fight that's that's kind of how it took off i started one kid at a time and you know i would do a lot of fighting myself and obviously i'm still pretty active and still kind of out out there doing some some advertising for my gym and for my career and putting a little bit of notoriety to what i'm doing around here and things that I'm teaching, but essentially, you know, I'm trying to build this business up. Well, I will definitely promote your gym for sure. I'll throw out some links and stuff to your websites and stuff. Right on. Um, so how can any, are tickets still available for um, the fight and bear? Yeah. Tickets are still available. I'm not sure what they have left. I know some of the VIP section tables were all selling out pretty fast. The tickets are all online. If you go to Donnie Brook Promotions, you can search it up on your Google machine and get your tickets that way. They're also doing some pay-per-view kind of thing too. So I'm really unfamiliar with the workings of their website, how it's going to go down, but obviously all their information's on there, the time it starts, what they're doing 
pay-per-views, I think maybe 20 bucks, it's pretty short money. Um, tickets are fairly cheap to consider it that, you know, some of these promotions charge hundreds of dollars for, for local shows. So um, if you're willing to make the three hour trip up to Vermont, it's right near Montpelier, Vermont. It's about a three hour drive. There's plenty of places to stay up there. We're going to be hanging out. We're going to be making, making some waves up there in Barry, Vermont. Very cool. Very cool. And tell them about your dope shirt, man. Yeah, man. So I made these shirts. These are definitely a, a spinoff on the, the last ones I made. This is kind of like my little calling card. You know, the, the hair and the tongue out with the hands going is, is kind of my trademark. It's been, uh, it's been fun to do, you know, it, something to do when people want to take your picture all the time. So, you know, I like to kind of blast one out. Now it's, now it's the thing where people like point their cameras at me and they're like, Hey man, you're not going to stick your tongue out at me. So now it's kind of like, I don't get to take a picture without doing it. You know, people are calling me out for it. So I got a couple t-shirts left, but people ask me for them, especially around fight times. I just got into a new sponsorship with the gym that I'm attached to. So I'm in a big, huge metal space building and there's a regular mom and pop fitness gym that just opened up right next to us. They are called Millennium Fitness and they have a Planet Eats inside there. Planet Eats is kind of a big thing up in this area where they do pre-made meals and have all kind of meal plannings, all low carb, no sugar, no gluten, healthy to eat kind of stuff. So they gave me a little sponsorship for this fight Been working out over there, throwing some weights around, um, getting some little training tips for building some strength, getting some meals out of them. So it's been a good little thing for me. Um, they're blowing up too. So this, this building's going to start to be the mecca for fitness in, in the area, I'm trying to do all things over here. Right on, man. Right on. So, um, my final thing is, um, where can anybody follow you? Like any, uh, or you want to give shout outs to? Yeah, man. So I'm pretty easy to find. If you type my name into Google, all, all my stuff comes up, my Facebook, my names linked up to, to everything. You know, I'm, I'm pretty, uh, intertwined into the internet right now. So you can really just search my name in your search bar and, a lot of videos will come up from my fights. You can put my name into YouTube. All my fights will come up. You can follow me on Instagram, Sean Red Seal Muay Thai. All the words are underscored. And you can follow Red Seal on Facebook. You get a lot of you get a lot of good stuff on Instagram and a lot of good stuff on my YouTube though. And check me out down on Route 44, right on Route 44 in Lakeville. Come down, check out the classes, swing in, get a little Muay Thai training, do strength conditioning, sports specific, come get a healthy meal next door, walk the treadmill, get a little sweat going, listen to some tunes. Right on. And we'll be rooting for you on this show. So everybody that comes on is always family and you're always welcome back on. I'll sure, I'm sure I'll have you back on uh, after your fight up in, in Bear. And I wish you nothing but the best for that one um hopefully we'll see the tongue in the victory hell and, yeah bro. Uh, hopefully you don't get 20 stitches this time yeah we're trying to stay away from from the cuts so definitely um definitely been working some some different angles and different uh, approaches to the game plan and you're gonna see you're gonna see something special but you're definitely gonna see something a little bit different from me um, the small gloves is definitely going to be bringing a little bit of a new kind of element and a new approach to the fight. So training that way has been a little bit of a, of a change for me and I'm feeling real comfortable. We're having a lot of fun with it. So, um, you can definitely expect to see some fun, some tongue out during the fight, some tongue out after the fight, um, uh, hopefully some blood, but not from me and uh that'll be it you know so really appreciate you having me on uh, i like to shout out my coach in my g my gym over at faf all my team over in holbrook big dirty kurt and all the boys over at 
the gym that have been giving me work the last couple of weeks. I really appreciate that. We've been doing some small glove stuff over over there, back in here. Chris Bettino's been helping me out. I'm going to shout out all the cats over at Red Seal, Mikey White, and Tony Physical especially, giving me the extra work. I'm going to shout out my fiance, who is supposedly having my kid any day now. So we're hoping that. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, man. Um, Junior's coming out real soon. And uh, we've been, we've been at the doctors the last couple of days. Everything's good, but he's, he's definitely making his presence known probably this week, hopefully before the fight next week. And then we'll have everything all wrapped up and ready to kill it. Oh, sorry, the the pro debut coming, expecting pretty soon. Yeah, man, debut's coming. Well, Sean, thank you again, and um, we'll see you again. And everybody, this is Maddie C Sports, check out Sean Schubert. He's gonna beat the hell out of somebody and laugh about it. So um, oh, yeah, we'll bro. see you again on the show for sure, bro. Yeah, Matt. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on, guy. Uh, thank you. All right, brother.